Well, the park seems a lot smaller than it did back in 1976. I was up here on a hot August night, and then, as now, the picnic tables, you know, were pretty much in this area. Uh, they've taken out a bunch of trees from those days. Well, anyways, this one day, uh, I was 14, 15 year old friend and I, we decided we wanted some beer. So, way down that way, there was somebody's cousin in from out of town who had an ID, and then one of the other older guys from over there went down to the liquor store and they brought back two quart bottles of Schlitz. And me and the other guy came over here, and there was like a kind of a big party had been going on before us. There was a group of the older guys, and we used to talk about the other side of the park, the other side of the park, you know, over here at Butterfield. And it was people from both sides of the park. There must have been three or four dozen people, 16, 17, 18, that age, beer cans all over the ground here. Well, we came over with our quart bottles of uh, Pap Schlitz, whatever the heck it was, and uh, not that long after that, most of the group left and they went over to the uh, parking lot over there. For some reason, I think they were playing basketball or something like that. So it was me, this, uh, my close friend, and then there was maybe four or five of the other guys that were hanging out here. In the mid-1970s, the Elmhurst Police Department acquired a pair of motocross bikes and they had two officers who had volunteered to do the motocross duty, which included things like the Prairie Path and all these parks. Uh, somewhere along the line, the Elmhurst Police Department got it into their head that there were kids over here drinking beer. So, officers Turk and Hibble became famous, infamous in the city of Elmhurst for the motocross patrol. You know, something I learned that night was cops have street smarts. What they did was this. They had the motocross bikes, and they came in off of Van Buren. And somewhere over there, about by the stop sign over at Linden, they picked up momentum. They were probably doing 40 miles per hour, and then they cut off their motors. And then they came into the parking lot. It was different back then. And they totally glided over here to the picnic area. I'm sitting. And all of a sudden, I look up, and coming right at me, it was like ghost riders in the sky or something. Here's these two motocross bikes with two cops on it coming right towards me, and there's not a sound. Total ghost riders. I grab my beer bottle in its uh, mandated brown paper bag, and I'm warning everybody else, and I was able to get my, uh, my beer into the big 55-gallon trash can. Another Elmhurst tradition, using old 55-gallon uh, barrels as trash cans. Well, I got mine into the trash can. The guy I was with, he wasn't able to do it in time. He could only hide it, like, right at the foot of the picnic bench. And this was back in the day uh, before these picnic benches had the steel legs. These were these big, massive wooden things. Well, cops had us cold. They popped us. They uh, took the two beer bottles as evidence got us into the car and we had to go to the police station the police uh drove us downtown i want to say that was still in the days when the squad cars were green and we had the city seal of the old uh elm tree leaf on the uh on the squad cars now i'm in the squad car i'm in the back seat we're cuffed with our hands behind our backs i decided to get cute and uh, I was able to slide the cuffs down under my butt and then get them up around my legs. So when that cop took us out of the car and he saw what I had done, he made quite the point of telling me, don't ever do that again, because usually when somebody tries to do that to him, he likes to slam on the brakes of his car. And if I had got hurt, it would have been my own fault. Okay, cool. I get that. You know, he's afraid of somebody attacking him or something. That's cool. So, uh, we drove up to the police station, and in those days, the police station was in a completely different spot. 
The police and fire station used to be up on Schiller. Now I'm on York, heading north. Uh, York Theater's up there on the left. Here's the light for Schiller. And we'll come around the corner here. And right over here, where all these yuppies are eating, this is about where the police and fire station used to be. Uh, an interesting thing about that, they put us into the, uh, oh, I don't know what you'd call it, like a uh, holding cell or something. Well, that's the new police station up there. Uh, yeah, they put us in the holding cells, which is probably a good thing because uh, years later I found out that the regular jail cell in the cellar, well, they had these uh, concrete stairs that led down into the uh, lockup. But at the bottom of the stairs, right across from the landing, there was a blank concrete wall. And the way this story was told to me, there seemed to be some examples of uh, prisoners who would accidentally uh, trip on those stairs going down into the uh, lockup. And uh, they would hit that wall and they'd get hurt. Well, our dads came to pick us up, and uh, I know my friend got screamed at, possibly hit. I'm not sure how discipline worked over there, but uh, I think his father was a little more tough than my dad. However, the th memory I bring home from that return trip was this. I'm sitting next to my dad in the front seat in the car. I think it was a 69 Chevy Impala Green. Uh, four door with the 327 two barrel. So, dad is ticked off. I mean, he is yelling at me. But the thing that I remember was him saying to me, I've been drinking all night and I'm drunk now. And if I get pulled over, I'll get a drunk driving charge. And that's the last thing I need from you right now. And, uh, that's when my brain started shutting down because I just had nothing to say to that. Oh, man. I got home. I got yelled at by both parents. Uh, my friend got home. Like I said, I'm not sure what the discipline was there. He got grounded, I'm pretty sure, for almost exactly one week. And that's where the irony is. So a couple of days later... Um, my friend's parents came over to my house and my parents and the friend's parents uh, sat down here at the bar and uh, me and my friend were sitting here too and oh the parents ripped on us and they tended kind of maybe to believe us but boy did they make it clear that this should not ever happen again. Can you detect a little foreshadowing here? Well, wouldn't you know, a week later, we decided to go and do the same thing, except this time we were in a car. Uh, there were two other guys with us. We had a connection with a local uh, car dealership. Uh, these guys were connected with the car dealership family. The, uh, we all had beer. We had pulled into the parking lot here. And before we even got through the first bottle of beer, here comes an Elmhurst squad, pulls in behind us, cuts us off, gets us all out of the car, and very fierce, yells at us, screams at us, what are you doing with the beer, where'd you get it, blah, 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 checks all the IDs. And since most everybody, you know, lived in, you know, the neighborhoods around here, uh, those days, 76, the police could make judgment calls. And in his fiercest possible voice, with his best body posture, yeah, I screamed us, yeah, I want you to dump out all that beer and never do this again. Blah, blah, blah. So our driver, he got out of the car and he's pouring all the beer out and dumping it in the can. One of those 55 gallon drums. And uh, the guy sitting next to me, the guy, same guy from last week, he went into one of the longest and most passionate prayers I have ever heard in my life. Well, we skated on that one. I mean, there was nothing going on, but I mean, the implication for my friend and myself was if our parents had found out about this one, 
man, we'd be slaughtered. In 1976, Elmhurst used to have field court uh, right here in the old Gloss Mansion. Uh, there was a lot of city operations out of this building. And so we went up to the big room upstairs and they had a trial. So it was mostly Elmhurst and some DuPage officers, I believe. Um, we got called up. Uh, me and this other guy were tried together. Uh, the cops had caught us dead to rights, but the problem was is we could not admit to our parents that we had been drinking beer. So immediately after being sworn in on the Bible, we both began to lie as much as we could. We were very mendacious. We lacked veracity. And what we told the uh, court was, yes, your honor, yes, those beers were there. But you see, they were not our beers. We had just happened upon the scene where some people had been sitting. We knew the people, we joined them, and we were having a lively, friendly conversation when the two Elmhurst motocross patrol officers, Officer Hibble and Officer Tur Turk, came up upon us and found us. Well, guess what happens next? The cops are giving their a testimony and I can't remember who it was, if it was Turk or if it was Hibble. And uh, they tell the judge, he said, well, your honor, I kind of tend to believe these, uh, these boys. Uh, you see, there must have been several hundred beer, beer cans scattered around up there around that, uh, those picnic tables, and there's no way these two boys could have drank all that beer. Okay. Uh... What happened was, is the judge found us guilty, but it was one of those things where, uh, the way it was supposed to work is, if we kept our records clean, it was like 60 days, 90 days, juvie thing, it would all be wiped clean. Uh, all be wiped clean. An added side note, you know, from Brian, uh, there was a young lady that I'd known over there, and I hadn't necessarily got along with her or been friends with her or an enemy or anything like that. But she was in court on the same day I was. Uh, she had been popped for possession of drugs. But she had seen me go up in front of the judge for my beer thing. And in her mind, I, from that day forward, I was part of the in crowd, and she always treated me decent after that because I got arrested and went to court on the same day she did. But that is not the entire story here. There was one last footnote. Years later, I ended up working over at SNH in Hillside, and the wife of one of the police officers worked over there and after a couple months I finally worked up the courage to try to talk to her and mention it and I can't remember how far I got and what I was trying to say and she just kind of looked at me put her hands on her hip and she goes if you're trying to tell me that my husband has arrested you at some point in time well you're not the first one to say that. Well, um, it's been a long time since then. There's a lot of things that changed. The Elmhurst police, they don't have a uh, motorcycle patrol anymore uh, that we know of anyways. Uh, all I can say is, you know, there was a lot of wrong on my side, and the police were actually the guys that helped us out the most <laughs> uh, those two different nights. All right, stay tuned to the channel. I'll see if I can remember any more stories. Long live the Cedar Avenue crew.